Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I know everybody's chomping at the bit to get out for the holiday weekend. Uh, one thing I want to tell you guys, this is being recorded. And for some of you newer traders, uh, please watch this video again. And if this is just a new strategy to you and or even, you know, some people that are uh, savvy traders may want to watch this over again right afterwards because uh, I talk about a lot of things, not just necessarily uh, how to build a poor man's covered put, but some of these things might go by you real quick the first time through, and you might feel like you're getting lost. If you watch it again, the stuff will really sink in, you guys. Uh, puts it into your long-term memory, and, and you'll be able to retain the information much better. This is on how to create a poor man's covered put. If you aren't familiar with this, it's going to be like synthetically short selling uh, a stock and then covering it with a put um, to limit some of our profit. But with this strategy, we're also limiting our risk in that when you're short selling a stock, you know, you have unlimited risk to the upside. Well, when you do this with the synthetic build out the way we're going to do it, you are limiting your risk and you know where your risk lies. Whereas with just naked short selling, you really don't know what your risk is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the beauty of the option, especially with this particular strategy. And another great thing with this strategy is, you know, if we have a portfolio of all long stocks, we're beholden to the upside uh, on the market. And like we just saw with the Brexit and everything else, you know, if there's a market correction, your risk is really to the downside. And uh, the overall market from the beginning of the year is pretty much unchanged. So in that time, we've had a lot of uh, movement in the market. And if you're beholden to just an up market, you're really going to be disappointed when you start looking at your portfolio. So it's really important in my eyes to start implementing option strategies to the portfolio. You know, a lot of fund managers, brokers, uh, and your financial advisors will tell you options are too risky for most people. Well, at the end of the day, uh, there's so much risk involved in just being long uh, stocks that, that they aren't telling you. And a lot of times those financial advisors are saying that simply because they don't understand options. So um, you, you guys are getting ahead of the game and even probably ahead of your financial advisor by, by doing this now. All right. So anyway, my name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you guys may recognize me from CNBC, Fox Business, or the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical market analysis. I've been trading my own money for over 20 years now, and I'm not telling you that I'm going to make you rich or that I'm going to make you a millionaire, but I am here to help you learn how to take control of your finances, manage your portfolio, and most importantly, take control of your own risk. That is the key here, you guys. When somebody else is uh, you know, the driver at your financial future. At the end of the day, a lot of those financial advisors came from sales backgrounds and that's why they succeed in the business is because they're good at sales and that's what their job is to do is to, to sell you a new product. And if you guys can take control of your risk, you're not paying somebody to just sell you something. You're actually investing and you will increase your yield because you're not paying somebody. So you're going to make mistakes, but they're going to make the same mistakes as well. Anyway, I've traded in most markets throughout my career from Chicago Board of Trade, traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodities, currencies, and options on all of those products and in all market conditions. Um, anyway, I got to go over this disclaimer real quick. This basically is telling us that any opinions, news, research, analysis, pro prices, and other information contained here or material provided by ProTrader Strategies and associate companies or employees is provided as general commentary and does not constitute investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any of the securities that we talk about. The reason why I can't give you guys investment advice is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know uh, what's in your portfolio. So what I'm talking about could exceed your risk parameters and or be 
counterintuitive to what you already have in your portfolio. So at the end of the day, take what we're teaching you here uh, and the rules that I am applying to these particular strategies and meld that to your own risk parameters. If you don't like the risk, then don't do it. So don't limit off the cliff with somebody else just because they say go out and do something. That's really uh, not in your best interest. And the bottom line is do your own homework. Please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, this is on a poor man's covered put. Now, see a lot of you guys were here, <clears throat> excuse me, last week when we did the poor man's covered call. And a poor man's covered call is basically buying a stock and then selling uh, a call against that, which is a uh, a basic strategy on, you know, a married uh, stock or a, a covered stock and or, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, or you, you're buying the stock and selling a call against it to kind of limit your upside, but you're also decreasing the amount you paid out for that stock. This is a similar strategy and a lot of you may have heard of short selling and uh, a lot of hedge funds use this in their portfolios because you know, they don't want to be, hold, be held to one direction. Plus, they see stocks when they get overbought. You know, the, if you think that something's overvalued, that's when you're going to look at this type of strategy in order to take advantage of that downside. And it may seem like it's a pretty in-depth strategy, but we are limiting our risk because we're going to be paying a debit for it. We know our risk going into it. Uh, and that's going to be the debit we paid. So it's really a great strategy to implement into a portfolio that is long deltas. And when I say long deltas in your portfolio, that means that it is biased to the upside. Now, that's all well and good when the market goes up. But when the market goes down, you need to have short deltas, meaning you're short uh, the market in particular or you're short the underlying to be able to take advantage of market corrections. Yes, if the market continues to go up, you could lose money in this particular strategy, but you know, you will be making money on your other long strategies. So, but when the market goes down, you know, we all have felt a long portfolio get beat up on down moves. This will be able to uh, uh, staff off some of that bleeding, I guess, if you will because this is the one where you'll be making the money on it. And it is a diagonal spread in that it's two different strikes in two separate months. But with this one, we're gonna be using uh, covered puts on leaps. Now, leaps are long-term anticipated security, and that's the abbreviation for that. That's how this is traditionally built out. I don't like to go out a year and a half or two years uh, that often. So what I like to do is kind of get into six months to a year uh, wheelhouse for that. Plus it, it opens up a lot more underlyings. Not all the underlyings have uh, the year and a half, if you will, or, or even just straight on a year. So I like to use the leaps and in that it's about six months to a year out. And it is not a calendar spread because a calendar spread would be using the same strike, meaning, uh, you know, we're doing the August 50 puts and the January 50 puts. So we're going to be doing different strikes. So that's what makes it the diagonal. And we are going to want a bearish strat or a bearish assumption. This is a bearish strategy, but only slightly. We don't want this to have this real quick, violent move to the downside. We want this to have a slow trickling, uh, nice, easy downslope, or be able to uh, try and pick a top. And I'm going to go into a couple of strategies and, and how we can find some of those tops, or at least increase our probability of a top. <clears throat> and why use the options in place of shorting or borrowing the stock because you're reducing your risk. Like I said, we're going to be paying for this option. So at the end of the day, that is as much as we can lose. 
Whereas if we were shorting or borrowing the stock, for one, you have to go out and borrow that stock, which is not always an easy task. But when you're shorting the stock, you have unlimited risk to the upside. And because we are limiting our risk, we are reducing our capital requirements. If you were to borrow the stock, your capital requirements for doing that are a lot greater. Whereas with this, because we're buying that put, our capital requirements are in that what we paid for that this particular strategy. And uh, this will increase our probability of success by building this out and it will increase our return on capital because we have less capital requirements to implement this strategy. Ultimately that increases our return on capital which is very important to a lot of people. And most importantly, it's going to create a more diversified portfolio of securities because if you're long, like I said, you need to add short deltas to that portfolio uh, just to decrease that portfolio's overall risk. Um, so I did this again. <laughs> I basically rambled on with uh, what those are. Like I said, reducing risk reducing our capital requirements, uh, creating more diversified portfolio, and ultimately higher probability of success. But the disadvantages of this is we're going to have to be active in earnings. Uh, but, you know, if you're long stock, you have to be active during those earnings as well. So that is also a down, uh, downside risk to that. And the long puts will eventually expire, whereas if you were just short the underlying, uh, borrowed that stock and you're short that stock, those don't expire, so you can hold them on forever. And you could get forced assignment on those uh, short puts that we're going to be using to finance some of the extrinsic value of the puts that we're getting long. Now, there's extrinsic value just in about all options. And there's intrinsic value, extrinsic value. Right now, we're concerned with the extrinsic value. So we're going to try and get rid of that extrinsic value. And by doing that, we're going to have to sell a put. Uh, the reason why we want to get rid of that extrinsic value is because that extrinsic value is what decays. That's what goes away. Intrinsic value is what's embedded in that option strike. Uh, for instance, if a stock is trading at 50 and we're buying the uh, 55 put, for instance, the cost of that 55 put might be $6.50. So the difference there between the 40 or where it's trading at 50 and the 55 is $5, right? And we're paying $6.50 for it. So we're paying extrinsic value of $1.50. Does that make sense to everybody? If the stock is trading 50, we're buying the 55 put, which would be in the money. The difference there is $5 from where it's trading to the put. And if we paid $6.50, that means we're paying over by $1.50. So we're trying to pay, we're trying to sell a put that pay for that $1.50. So that we're only having intrinsic value, which doesn't decay. Uh, and we don't get a dividend. We don't actually, we don't receive a dividend. We don't, I should have changed that. that we don't have to pay a dividend. If you're short the stock, you have to pay a dividend. All right. So rules of thumb, uh, we're going to be using six months to a year out for the long put. Like I, I mentioned that I don't like to go the year and a half. Traditionally, it's a, a year and a half to two years for elite, but I want to go six months to a year on this. It's just a little easier to pay for that extrinsic value a little bit. And we don't want to pay a lot for that extrinsic value of that long put, like I mentioned. And we want to use lower volatility stocks. Now, that's the difference with this than if we were doing uh, the strategy where we borrowed stock and got short that stock. We want a high volatility environment for that because 
then we'll get more for the put that we're selling. Uh, and in that, that's the difference. Now we want low volatility stocks because we don't want it to run through our short put for one and two. Uh, if volatility expands, that actually helps us out in that longer duration contract because volatility affects further duration more than it does right now. So uh, it may seem a little odd, but it does have a tendency to pump that up. So that long put we have will have premium pumped into it faster than the one that we're short. And we're going to sell the near term out of the money strike. The reason why we're doing it this way and trying to get pretty far out, you know, this only goes out 98 days on this, but as you can see, it's starting to flatten down and it would uh, continue to flatten out the further out we go. Uh, why isn't it? So it's going to kind of do that the further out we go on the theta decay. That This is theta decay right here. So, um, what we want to see happen is not a lot of decay happening in that long duration option we're long because that makes the value go down. But the one that we, the put we sell, we want that theta decay to eat away at that premium so that we can collect as much as we can right away. Now our max profit, you know, it's difficult to say because you heard me talking about how volatility affects the further duration more than it does the nearer duration. Uh, that is what makes this difficult to figure out what our max profit is because of that difference in volatility. And But a rule of thumb, basically, a quick and easy way to do it is the width of the strikes minus the net debit paid. So if we have uh, $10 wide strikes, and we pay $7.50 for it, then our max profit is at $2.50, okay? And some people say the risk reward seems a little odd. Well, anytime you're buying an option, your uh, risk is more than your reward for all intents and purposes because of the probabilities that are embedded in there. Um, yes, you can hit a home run when you're buying an option, but at the end of the day, your risks are outweighed by the probability of it, that particular option not succeeding. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, this your max profit may be considered unlimited, being that it could go to zero um, because of the different options expirations. If we were to let that short put expire worthless and we left on that long put, you know, from wherever we get into that put to zero is our total max profit potential. And then our max loss is, like I said, that debit we paid. If I go back to that example of $10 wide strikes uh, and we paid $7.50, that is the most that we can lose in this strategy but I'm going to show you different ways that we can reduce that max loss by selling more premium against this long put. And the break even is going to be our long put strike price minus the net debit paid. So uh, in that example where um, we have the 50 strike and we buy the 55 strike, we are going the net debit we paid if we if we did this as a 45 if we get short the 45 put the market's trading at 50 and we buy the 55 strike and we totally pay five dollars that brings our break even to 50. okay so like i said uh, if we're buying the 55 strike and we're paying six dollars and 50 cents for that and we sell the 45 puts and we collect $1.50 for that, our total investment in this is 
So we subtract the long put, which is the 55, minus the $5 that we're paying. Our break even is right there at 50. And I'm going to go, I know this is probably going by a lot of people really fast, but when we get into the platform, which we're about to do, it will make it a, make a lot more sense when we see it on the platform. So let's pull up the trading platform. And I've got it on the wrong side. Let me drag it over here. All right. So what we're going to be looking for for this strategy is low implied volatility. And one thing I always do is go over here. And this is my watch list. This is all the stocks that I really like to watch. And I go into customization and I pull out the IV percent. I don't know why. Oh, which is right there. Uh, IV, uh, IV percent or just type in IV and find the IV one that says IV percent. Add that over. Hit OK. And then for this one, we want the low implied volatility ones, the ones that are below uh, probably even 30. I don't like to go above 30 with this, so that's another rule of thumb. When we're doing this strategy, we want as low implied volatility as we can get. So we're going to be kind of looking at this. And this is usually where I, uh, in the webinars, throw it out to you guys in the questions boxes. In the question box, I should say, start throwing out some ticker symbols that you think are overvalued, and this would be something that you think is a short. You know, it, it's overbought, it's overpriced. We're going to look to get short this underlying, and then that way I can go through the steps with you guys. XOM, yeah, uh, TLT. That's another good one. I. You know, it's like stepping in front of a freight train right now. But I, I agree with you. Uh, Shams, is that, am I saying that correctly? TLT, I think, is overdone. Oh, you guys are all on the same page with me. Uh, Tesla could very well be overdone. Um, Verizon, good one. All right, so we'll start. We'll look at these because I think these are all really good ones. So XOM to start it off. Exxon Mobil blasting off, uh, you know, Here's what I usually do with mine, uh, and I start looking at it. You know, it's, I, I haven't adjusted my Fibonacci's, obviously. Um, so let's just go ahead and remove that. Um, I don't even always look at, oh, I don't want to, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to remove my Fibonacci. Uh, anyway, I don't have the time to deal with that. Oh, remove drawing. There we go. Um, so... With XOM, you know, I, I usually, before I do this, I go through my own thought process. You know, I think that there's a glut of oil out there that is going to send prices down and that should hurt Exxon Mobil. So, um, you know, in that regard, uh, despite the fact that we're going into a holiday weekend and they're saying that, you know, there's it could be one of the biggest traveled uh, holidays uh, in quite a while. So, you know, that being said, you got to weigh all the pros and cons. One thing I always look at is this market profile, and I've done a video on it, that basically what this does is tells you the psychology of the market. It tells you where the market finds value. That's where this is right here. It's where the most time and volume has been spent for this particular underlying. And in that, the further it gets away from the value area high or the value area low, and in this regards, it's getting way away from the value area high, that it's getting a little overdone. It means, you know, there's going to be people that are long are going to start to cover it, and it's going to want to migrate back towards this point of control, which is considered to be like a magnet. So the further away it gets, the more pressure there is on it wanting to go back as a psychological thing. So we'll look at that one for sure. And something I usually look at if it's not, you know, a brand new high, I'll look at the you know what some of the other highs are just to give me a idea as to where I want to be on something like this you know so this is on a three year so the value area is a little bit higher I don't look that far out usually but so we'll look at it as this being a resistance area for this particular one so it's right around 97 um, that's so that's where I'm going to be kind of looking for an idea as to where I would buy it buy my, buy my option. So with this, like I said, I usually go out, you know, a few hundred, 
uh, days. You know, most people would consider the Leafs to be down here in these these June, but the January it's kind of setting up nicely because these January options uh, get a lot of open interest and volume because a lot of people like to play the end of the year. So you can see that there's a lot more volume. There's quite a bit of volume and open interest in these, and the bid ask is still pretty tight. Another thing I always look at for a particular underlying is if it's under a hundred dollars, if it's trading under a hundred dollars, I want this bid ask to be no more than 10 cents wide. As you can see here, it's, it's seven cents wide and it's even tighter here. So that fits the parameter. I want it to be at least less than 10 cents wide on a stock that's under a hundred dollars. And you know, that varies going further out. As you can see here, Exxon Mobil, implied volatility percent, pretty low, or very low, I should say. So that puts that parameter. So the next thing we're going to go to do is we're going to be looking to buy somewhere around the 80 delta. And the 80 delta it is right in between here, the 110, 105s. And <clears throat> the next determining factor is going to be how easy uh, can I finance those and how much I really want to pay for this? You know, how much risk do I want to put out on this one? So for this purpose, let's just start with the 105s. So a real quick cheat to figure out what the extrinsic value of this 105 put is, is just look over at the corresponding call. And that's right about what the uh, extrinsic value is. So we want to try and finance about $1.56 of this. Um, and you can do the math also. You can take the 1465 and subtract it from the 105 and then take that and subtract it from where it's trading. I just like to go quick and that's an old floor trick that we would do is just what's the... What's the corresponding call looking for? So this is looking like the 80s is going to be the one that's going to finance the most of it. So that's the one we're going to hold down control and hit sell. <clears throat> so now going back to our break even and everything else, the width of our strikes are 25. All right. So we would subtract. I'm going to have to let me pull up my calculator just so we can see this visually. So the 105 puts are the ones we're long, right? So to find out what our uh, break even is, is we take that 105 put and subtract the debit we pay for this, which is 13.38. You know, and that's, I would suggest, especially on, on something like this, see, we got a pretty wide market down here, go down a, you know, 10 cents and start cancel replace going a little bit higher every time you guys don't always just go to the mid market or the natural for that matter. Cause then, you know, there's a lot of participation in here and somebody might see your uh, trade in there and jump on it. And, you know, it, it will bid this bid up a little bit, you know, maybe 1470. And that might be the price that somebody's looking to really sell. They're in the weeds is what we used to call it. They're not really showing an offer, but, any offer better than this, they might be willing to take. So keep that in mind. Always start low, and it doesn't cost you any money to cancel replace, but if you just go in there and fire it, and all of a sudden, bang, you get hit, that may have cost you, uh, you know, a nickel or a dime. So, and that's real money, you guys. Over time, that, if you consistently give up that nickel and a dime, that's a lot of money and a lot of yield out of your portfolio over a long period of time. So start low, it doesn't cost you anything to cancel replace and just work it up. So then we get our break even is $91.62. So our break even is actually below where we are trading, which is good. That means, or actually, no, that uh, it's quite a bit below where we're trading. Did I do that right? I'm buying, no, I'm selling the near-term option. Oh, did I do that wrong? I'm buying this one. 
That's why it's making it wrong. I'm buying the further duration and I'm selling this one. So yeah, so I'm buying. Why is that setting that up backwards for me? I'm buying. Oh, sorry. I don't want to buy the June. I'm sorry. That's what made it wrong. I would that, use that as the example. I want to sell the August. So I'm going to buy the, sorry, you guys. I'm buying the 200 days out, and then I'm going to go in to the August and try and finance it. That's why it was so easy to finance that $1.65. Um, so I don't want to go right here to just out of the money because, for one, I think it's topping out there. Um, so in that, let's try and go a little bit further out because it will be a little bit easier to finance it. And for some of you that don't want to spend this much money on the option you know you can use a lower priced option on it so uh the near is on the yeah sorry i sorry you guys about that confusion i was using that june as the example and was thinking you know june is the near term option right now so i, I wasn't looking over here sorry thought i had it already set up um, but we want to be looking to sell the August. So uh, if I can do the 105s, all right, so we want to finance 52 cents. So I'm going to go down here and try and find the option that will finance that. This is the one that will, the 87 and a half calls in the August. It's the one that I want to sell. There we go. All right, I can stop sweating now because I made that mistake. I corrected it. So we want to buy the 200 days out in the January, 105 puts, and then sell the one that will finance that extrinsic value, which is these in the August, which we did there. So let's redo our break even and our spread widths. All right, so our break even from the 105 puts, then we're going to subtract It'd be really funny if you guys could see my face. I'm sure it's like beat red right now for making that mistake for you guys. All right, so the 105 puts to find our break even, then we subtract the $12.66. So our break even is $92.34. So the market needs to come down a little bit before we're going to get our break even. And again, like I said, when we look to this that's pretty wide so as you can imagine and it's probably because it's friday after the close we wouldn't want to be giving up that much edge so at the end of the day i would probably go down and look at uh you know doing it quite a bit lower and ramping that up because you know if you gave up bid this at 13 and then sold those other ones a little bit that would put us at you know, 1247 or something like that. So, um, you know, if I bid up to 13 here and then sold those, so that'd be right about where I'd probably start on something like that. And then ramp it up as we go along. <clears throat> Does that make sense? And then we could figure out what our break even is. And ultimately, you're going to need to figure out where your break even is before you go into it. So if we take the 105s now, if we could get it here and subtract that $12.47, that puts our break even a lot closer to where we are now. We would still need the market to come down to meet our break even on this, though. But again, that's probably because this is a little bit wider. The other thing we could look at is what our max profit would be on this. And if we go from 87.50, to 105, that's going to give us, um, off the top of my head, that's 212, 1750. So the width of these two is 17 dollars and 50 cents, and the uh, 17 dollars and 50 cents minus the net debit would be 12 dollars and 47 cents. So our uh, max profit would be $5.03. 
Now, we're paying $12.47. Our max profit is $5.03 on that. So the next thing that we need to do to make sure, you know, there's a lot that goes into building out strategies, you guys, and take the time to do it before you just fire the, uh, pull the trigger on this. Because, you know, one of the biggest things that you can control in, in being profitable is order entry and making sure that you are making, uh, making sure that you can be profitable. You know, some people, I've seen people build this strategy out where, you know, the debit they're paying here is, you know, more than what the width of these strikes are. So in a sense, if somebody paid $17.10 for this strategy, that is only $17.50 or $17.60 for the strategy, that's only $17.50, you can't win because you're paying more than the width of those strikes and you just can't do that. So the next thing to look at is making sure that the debit we're paying isn't more than 75% the width of these strikes. So for instance, you know, if it's to make math real easy, real quick, if it's $10 wide, we would not want to pay any more than $7 and 50 cents for the strategy because that equals 75 percent right so that's the easy math on that so uh what we need to do is make sure we're not if we do it at this price we're not giving up too much risk reward so we take our 12 dollars and 47 cents and divide it by the width of those strikes which is 17 dollars and 50 cents right and that equals 71%. So we're only paying 71% the width of those strikes. Does that make sense to everybody? Because I know I, that could got a little confusing. And this is another reason why it's really important to go back and watch it because it will sink in. If, if we paid that original $13 or something, if we, you know, paid, let's say $13.50 for it, I think was originally around what it was and divide that by the seventeen dollars and fifty cents. Then we're paying seventy-seven percent the width of those strikes, which is too much. So don't allow yourself to to chase this to go over that, which is the real key takeaway there, you guys. Um, so let's look at another one. So TLT was another one uh, on TLT. We want to go to TLT and. So TLT, I do, you know, and some of these strategies, full disclosure, I do have positions in it. As you can see, obviously, I, I like being short TLT. Um, and I've done stuff on the daily market commentaries about that. So uh, we'll add in a look at doing this as I'm going to do a little. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get all of the strikes in there. <clears throat> So we're going to be looking at the 80 again, uh, around the 80 delta. I usually go anywhere between like 74 to 86 uh, on the short deltas that we're looking for. So uh, the 84 is uh, the 165 puts that we're going to be looking to buy in the January, just double checking that. Now I'm going to be paranoid about it. And we're going to look to finance about 96 cents of that. That's about what the extrinsic value is, just a quick and dirty way. It's uh, not foolproof, but it is very close. So as long as you usually go over, you're pretty good. So the 135s, we're going to sell. And um, let's just look and see how wide that bid ask was on these. So not quite a dollar. So, you know, that just gives you a ballpark of where to start bidding. You know, if we bid $27 and sold it for a dollar, we would be looking right around 26, right? So that's pretty close. Um, so in that, we got to go through these steps again, right? What's our break even? We want to make sure our break even is relatively close to where we, we are. So if we take the 65 strike, 165 strike that we're long, 
subtract the debit we pay for it, which is the 2609. Something like 26.09. So our break even is 138.91. So that's a little bit below where we are there. Um, the next thing to do is, you know, the the optimal thing to do is to get this where we're kind of right at where our break even. Our break even is either above where we're trading, because then we're already, you know, exceeding our break even. And one way to do that is to, you know, maybe change these to the 136s. But for this purpose, let's just keep going with it right now. So that was our break even was a little bit below where we are. And then the next thing to do is to look at these widths. So the width here is uh, 30 ticks wide, right? So we take the $26. Let's just take 26 and divide it by 30. 86%, so that would not work. That would immediately get kicked to the curb. All right, so the other thing you can do is kind of play around, start playing around with them, give up a little bit more of that. So now we're at 29 ticks wide, or $25. So let's look and see if it meets it. I don't think it's going to, it's just not gonna work. Um, so $25 and 80 cents divided by 29 to 88 so it's not going to work so let's move on to the next one somebody else was saying tesla and you don't have to spend a lot of time on them just to kind of move on uh tesla let's see what your id percent is it's 21 so that works you know, one other thing that I want to mention is, and it's super hard to do unless we were going to do Nike. We really, in the short, I don't like to sell the option, have my short put in the option cycle that has the earnings, but let's pretend that these all don't have that options uh, earnings play. Because, you know, when I talked about volatility expansion, and it usually it, it's going to happen in the further duration if you have the short option in the one that has the earnings it can have a tendency to jack that volatility up in that option cycle so be aware of that uh, that that short that that option that has the binary event which is the earnings or you know um, you know for the TLT that we just looked at the would have the FOMC min, uh, meeting in it. You know, just be aware of that. When you're selling that option, uh, you don't really want that to have the, the binary event going on in there because it will affect that uh, differently than normal. But let's pretend that we don't have that going on. And we have low implied volatility. Is that okay, everybody, if we uh, make that little exception? We're pretending there's no binary event. But be aware of that in the future. When you're doing this, double check to make sure there's no binary event going on in that option. Because this, once the closer we get to that event, these options will start getting jacked up with um, premium. And you got to be a, a big hitter to do Tesla in this position because we're going to be paying a lot. So you need to have, have the margin in there. So um, I don't know why these, these are all acting funny because the options are kind of wanky uh, because there's the bid offers are gone. So it's throwing off our deltas. Um, so let's just move on. I don't want to, That'll be a, an example that's very difficult to explain through. Just because, as you can see, those the deltas are off because of the way that the the prices are off. There's just nobody in there right now. So the deltas start cranking up, and then they start going down. It shouldn't do that. It should be going closer to like this. As you can see, they continually go higher. The further in the money you go, these should be too, and they're they're all over the place. So let's just move on. 
So Verizon, let's look at Verizon. Let's look at, let me, uh, let me close this trade grid. That can be confusing for people too. So Verizon, let's move on to that. We have low implied volatility, which is good. So we're going to be looking for that like 84-ish delta. Um, we could even probably go to the 80 delta because it's only 15 plus cents in extrinsic value. So we're going to buy that one. And then we can go down and look at uh, financing that extrinsic value, which was what, around 20 cents. So if we can do it for 20 cents, that'd be nice. So right around in here. And another thing with this strategy, now, um, if we are looking to defend this and uh, do things like that, if this starts going against us, remember the most you paid for the, or the most you can lose is the debit paid. So if I'm losing on this strategy, I usually, uh, the only way that I'm going to defend this is when, if the market's rallying on me and going against me, these options are going to decay rather quickly. I'm going to roll these out in time and probably up a few ticks to collect a little bit more premium. And usually when I'm rolling it up, I'm going to roll it up to about the 16 delta. So if it immediately went against me, I'd probably roll these out to the September and go to the 16 delta. Right? If it's coming down and I'm winning, I'm probably not going to do anything. I'm going to let it go and collect my uh, max profit on it. If the market just trades sideways, then we're going to continue to roll this out and collect more credits, uh, you know, especially if it's trading sideways. I'm going to probably roll it straight out to around the 10 or 16 delta, depending, you know, on how much premium I can get and how much I think it's going to go down. And that's kind of like, uh, you know, up to you guys to kind of decide that. I can't really tell you exactly where it is, but that's where I go. And it kind of depends on how much it's gone against me. If it's straight up, you know, in in 25, 30 days, if it's right there still at $56, I'm going to probably roll it straight across to the 50 delta and collect another 25 cents and just lower my uh, initial debit I paid, which will increase my max profit potential, right? Because the less I pay overall, that increases that difference in the width of those strikes. So I'm going to try and continue to roll this out in time every single month and, you know, knock this down quite a bit. That's the overall theory on this is, uh, you know, and if it's trading right there at, let's say, $41 at the end of August or at the end of the August expiration, I should say, these expire worthless, that enables you to roll this out to the September, okay, you're going to roll out to September and you're going to move that down to about the 10 delta again and collect a little bit more premium. Now the width of your strikes increases, the debit you paid decreases, and that increases your max profit exponentially. Okay. Does that make sense? Because if you can roll this out, you know, five more dollars lower to the 45 delta, or to the 45 strike, you've increased the width of that strategy by $5 and you decrease the debit you paid by another 20, 30 cents. That's great. That's exactly what we would want to see consistently. And then the next, at the end of September's expiration, it's trading at $46. Now those expire worthless. Roll those out again, $5 lower to the 40. You know, that's, that's winning. All right, so back to this again, and then uh, I'll go through a couple of strategies that I've vetted also. Um, so we're looking at this at $7.82. One thing you want to make sure it uh, isn't more than the width of those strikes, which is $12.50 wide, so that's not. That's good. All right, figure out where our break even is, and a lot of pro you probably can do it in your head. I've already got it in my head, but let's just do it so that it's visual. Um, so the sixty-two dollars and fifty cents 
is the one that we're paying for, right, for Verizon. And we're paying a debit of $7.82, so we subtract for $7.82. It gives us $54.67. That's our break even. So that's below a little bit where we're trading. So, you know, ultimately we would want it maybe, you know, at $56 would be the best case scenario. Um, so we know where our break even is. We also want to make sure it's not more than 75% the width of those strikes. So we take the $12.50, which is the width of these strikes from 50 to 62.50, and divide that by what we paid, right, the debit. And that gives us the wrong, because I did that wrong, I did that backwards, sorry, $7.82 divided by the width of the strikes. And that gives us 65. So that's really, really good, you guys. So, you know, the closer to 50 you can get, the, you know, your risk reward is 50-50 there, which is really good. So that would be something I would look at, you know, that's, you're not paying a whole lot for this strategy. We finance most of our extrinsic value. They have, uh, uh, Verizon has a lot of volume and open interest. You can just tell by the, the bid ask is a couple of pennies wide. This is a really good strategy that we could do. Uh, one thing we would want to look at, of course, is that earnings cycle is in there. You know, we're pretending it's not in there for this scenario, but please don't forget about earnings. You don't want that to really be in there, but it's, it's really hard to find a good example. And, you know, Verizon's really overextended the upside. All right, so a couple of other ones uh, that have really nice chart setups that I was looking at was, um, I think it was ADM. Was it ADM that I was looking at? I'm going to try and find it real quick. No, it wasn't ADM. Um, what was it? Uh, Pfizer. Pfizer looks like it's getting a little overextended here. Um, you know, it's it's blasted up. Of course, you know they always beat earnings, um, but it is overextended in the meantime. And if there wasn't that, you know, it and if the earnings is way over here, right next to the expiration, you know, you can get away with it a little bit more. It gives you a lot of time to be right uh, before that earnings. Uh, event and you might be able to just take off that short put you know um, for almost nothing sometimes and just ride it out but uh, so that means it you can tell right here it has low implied volatility like I said it's overextended on the market profile so let's look at it here so um, with Pfizer we could look at like around that 80 some odd delta so right here so we're going to be looking by the 39 puts We've got to finance about 45 cents if we can and then so that's about the we're not going to necessarily be able to do that but let's try to do that finance at least a little bit of it we know we got a lot of option cycles to go through it Pfizer has tight bid asks, even in those longer duration ones. I mean, 30 cents wide on those is really good, especially for that far out. And then, again, what's our break even? Take the, we're subtracting the debit we paid from that strike that we're long. So we're going to take the 39 strike Subtract it from the $4.11 we're paying for it. So the 39 strike we're long minus the $4.11 we're paying for it. And that gives us $34.89. Again, that's slightly below where we are. So the next thing, next step is how wide is this? It's uh, $6 wide. So if we take the $6 minus four dollars and eleven cents oh sorry if we take the four dollars and eleven cents sorry that cancel cancel four dollars and eleven cents we got to figure out if it's 
feasible for us to do this. 68, that works. So that would work for this particular strategy. The next thing you can also do is you can play around with that a little bit more because uh, it's 65. You know, maybe you want to get a little bit more for it. We could even adjust this to the, uh, the 40s. We're paying $4.96 now. So let's do our math again. Uh, if the price keeps steadily moving down, would you keep selling the out-of-the-money puts or just hold the long put or take profits? <clears throat> well, that's a great question, Nick. I, I, If it is going to look like it's going to expire out of the money, then I will usually go and I will roll that out in time and go to about that 10 delta, collect a little bit more premium. Because remember, we're increasing the width of our spreads and we're decreasing the amount we paid for that debit, which increases our profit potential. Because remember, our max profit is the width of the strikes minus the net debit we paid. So if we're paying less total overall debit and our widths are increasing, that increases our max profit potential. So I, I continue to do it. Now, if you think the, the bottom is going to fall out on the stock and it's going to pull a Twitter or, or a GoPro and just fall fall to nothing, then, you know, that's that's kind of up to you. Then you're increasing your uh, reward by a lot. But, you know, you also have synthetically increased your risk by not decreasing that debit, right? So let's look at this one example real quick. Seven, so it's $7 wide. They increase the width. But we've increased what we paid for it, so seven or four dollars and ninety six cents divided by the width, which is seven dollars. So we've increased, you know, what we're paying in relation to what we can win seven dot seventy percent. You know, it's now seventy percent. But let's look at this way. Now we're paying, let's say five dollars. We can do the math real quick. Five five dollars for all intents and purposes minus strike were long 45 you know that's gotten us a lot our break even a lot closer to where it's currently trading so that you also have to weigh uh, you know you might you increase the width gotten it closer to the break even I would probably go with this one over that last one despite I I limited my reward a little bit on it does that make sense the other one was um, Activision. This would probably be the last example I'll get be able to get to. Sorry, I, I see a lot of people threw out some extra um, uh, ticker symbols out there. I'm just going to be crunched for time here. So let's look at it. 24%, so that's below our 30% mark. Um, Let's close out those February. These have the February option cycle. But um, here's an example of January. Everybody likes to play in January. I bet the bid ask only going 31 days for or less than 31 days further. Uh, these are 40 cents uh, and these are only 10 cents wide. So keep in mind the reason why I like to have the tight bid ask you guys, the more edge you have to give up to get in, that's eating away at your profit. So there's not as many people playing in the February uh, after the new year than these January. So that's another reason why I like to opt for this one. Now we're going to look for that 80 strike or the, sorry, the 80 delta ish. So um, I already vetted this one. So I'm, I'm going to go for the 47s here. And then, so we need to be able to finance the dollar thirty or $1.23, I should say. So we got the 47, so where can we finance that extrinsic value? It's right there at around, you know, we'd probably do the 38s, but, you know, that's only a dollar something further down. So we'd want to sell maybe the 37s for that. Because, again, we could, 
and there'll be more options uh, coming in on this by the time we have to worry about this expiring. Because keep in mind, you'll have the weeklies, and I don't have a problem going through the weeklies as long as there's good volume and open interest. But as soon as these July options expire, you're going to get another uh, expiration cycle after that August. So um, one thing I forgot to look at, this is the reason why I really like this Activision. You know, I talked about it goes above this value area high. It's gotten a little overextended. You know, anybody that looks at a chart and see or seen charts, you know, this kind of spinning top shows a possible reversal of trend. Of course, we do have the earnings event coming up and kind of trying to ignore that right now. So I would expect this to at least have a bit of a pullback. You know, that kind of chart set up. And I, I I've done videos on chart setups and stuff like that too, so you can check that out. But this to me looks like it's just had a big run. There's going to be some profit taking in there. So it could be the perfect time to short this underlying. So going back to, we said we were selling these 37 puts and buying the 47 puts for that reason. Because again, let me do one more thing. The 47 puts, think about it. We're buying these 47 puts way up here, which gives us a lot of room to be wrong. So the 47 puts, we want to buy here and then sell those 37 puts in the August to finance as much as that as we can. And, you know, it's $10 wide. We're paying $4 or $7.44. Anybody know what that is in percentage wise with that in your head? <laughs> All right. So if we take the, Seven dollars forty-four divided by the ten is what? Ding ding ding. Forty-seven percent, or seventy-four percent. Seventy-four percent. So that meets the parameter. Now the next, thing, the other thing we want to do is look where our break-even is on this. So forty-seven dollars minus the seven dollars and forty-four cents equals. 39.56. So when it's trading 39.56, that's our break even. It's just a couple of pennies below, right? You know, the, the way to bump that up is pay a little bit less. That'll bump that up to probably pretty close to that. So if you paid like a nickel, uh, nickel less, you know, you'd get that right. Our break even is right where we are, which is the best scenario that we found so far, right? A couple of those were a couple of dollars below. This one is the break even is a nickel below where we are right now. We've met our uh, the width ratio, which means you know we're less than 75. We're paying less than 75 percent the width of these. So if we're paying seven dollars and 44 cents or seven dollars and 40 cents, like I said, if you pay a little less, you know our profit is two dollars and 60 cents. So that all meets everything came together on this one. Aside from the fact that there is an earnings in this one, but the earnings is pretty far away. And if we get this pullback relatively quickly, you know, we'll get our uh, our uh, max profit much quicker. And remember, with this strategy, when you're shorting it, volatility expands when the market goes down. So. Uh, and that's because of fear of markets going down. So when vol when the market goes down, that helps this one out a lot better than even the poor man's covered call that we did. Because when markets go down, volatility goes up. When volatility goes up, it affects those longer duration options more than the shorter duration options. Okay, so uh, that will help this strategy out a lot more. All right, if you guys, does anybody have any questions before we go? Because I know we covered a lot. Uh, and um, all four stocks you choose had good earnings or had good earnings and good long-term potential. We are choosing winning stocks for this strategy. We are choosing stocks that we want to go down in this strategy. And I picked, I, the ones that I picked are at, you know, 
looking for tops or overextended because that's what I want. I don't want the stock that's always getting beat up because it's going to have a tendency the same thing as to uh, come around. So with this one, um, you know, you either want a slow downtrend like this, which would be good, um, or something that has picked the top. Now, we've had a big rally in the last few days, you know, so it's hard to find something. And the overall trend this year has been slightly up for most stocks anyway. So it's hard to find something that's been really trending downward um, quite a bit other than, uh, you know, I guess you could say like Twitter uh, has been trending down for the most part for the better part of the year. But it's also looked like it's kind of come back a little bit, come back to the value area. But, you know, that is another way to look at it is, is a stock that's nicely trending this way. The ones that I picked, uh, the reason why I picked them was because they just, to me, with the market profile, look like they're pretty much topping out. And I don't like to always try and pick topping out patterns, but those were some good examples of uh, ones that are, you know, pretty... Uh, textbook uh, topping patterns. You know, it's it's extended out. There's not a lot of participation. As you can see, these are just like single print. You know, if, if we zoom in here, there was not, uh, of course, my monkey bars even got smaller. But you can see when it rallied up here, there was only one time bracket in that whole extension to the upside, which just be, means that all the buyers left there wasn't a lot of time spent there. It just meant there was no desire to trade up here. And then the market slammed back down. So to me, that is a, a atypical topping pattern. Um, so not just talking, again, not just talking about poor man's covered call, but, you know, to to see a high probability trade. Now, if to, on Monday, or sorry, we're not open Monday, but, Tuesday, if this opens up and trades above this high, then, you know, obviously that's not going to be a good trade. You would maybe that would be the time to immediately exit this strategy. Uh, but if the market starts trading down and settles below this low, that would definitely be a confirmation of, you know, a reversal in trend. A little bit more than just talking about, you know, uh, poor man's covered put, but that's another thing with this. You know, if you have a little bit less risk parameter, make sure it's confirmed and looking like it's going to settle below uh, the low of today, and then th then enter that short position. How about losing stocks like DB? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean. I would not have a problem shorting Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, you know, and that's the other thing, you know, on a contrarian point of view, uh, these stocks bounce back after the whole Brexit thing. Well, at the end of the day, our Fed is probably not going to raise interest rates, and that's why the markets and these financials have gone down. So I embarrass financials. I wouldn't have a problem in something like this where it isn't really at those extremes, but, you know, I'm bearish this stock. So... Goldman Sachs uh, may not meet that 50% or Deutsche Bank. I think the financials have had pretty high implied volatility, but just slightly below. What was Deutsche Bank? Um, so it's above. See, that's the problem is this above that. But, you know, if they start really tanking, it could go higher. I would just try and stay away from those financials on this particular type of strategy just because, you know, if it does trade sideways and volatility comes out, then that's going to hurt. Uh, has JP Morgan got less than that IV? It's 31. So it's real close. You know, I mean, if you really want to go with it, yeah. If you're And if you're really bearish, uh, then your assumption is it's going to want to come back down for sure. Um, but you know, most of these financials have come back to right where the magnet is, and a lot of times they get comfortable right there. So, um, you know, that will work. You know, you could try and build that out with that. 
just go through those steps that I talked about and make sure that, you know, it fits the parameters that, you know, your break even is very close to where we're trading now. You're paying for the extrinsic value by selling that short put and, you know, your assumption to the downside works. The width uh, of those strikes, the, what you're paying does not exceed 75% the width of those strikes. Those are the keys. Because if you're paying 80, 90 percent, you know, if you got ten dollar wide, and you're paying nine dollars, you're risking nine dollars to make one dollar because you're paying nine dollars and it's ten dollars wide. You can only make one dollar. That risk reward does not work for me. OK. I look for high probability and the higher the probability, uh, the better. And when you're nine dollars to make one dollars. You're, you got a high probability, but your risk reward of that nine dollars does not exceed, or does not make sense to me. Uh, if you're, yeah, you could. Uh, if you're really bearish, J.P. Morgan, can you go with Augie Oc? Um Yeah, you definitely could. Just make sure there's good open interest, which you know it's J.P. Morgan. I'm sure there is, uh, and then you wouldn't have to pay as much. You know, if you went to the Jan. That really isn't considered as much of a poor man's covered call as like the diagonal. But yeah, you can basically follow those same parameters and, uh, you know, make sure you're not paying too much for the width of those. Uh, it gives you another month to roll it out through too. So yeah, for sure you could. Uh, Maureen, yes, this was recorded and uh, it will be sent to you as soon as I get done. I got to render it and then we got to upload it and then they send it out in an email. So yeah, you will get a recording of this. And again, everybody who watched this, if it was new to you uh, and some of this stuff blew by you, watch it again because it will make it sink in. If you wait a month or so down the road, then it will get lost and you'll have to relearn everything. So please do that. All right. Um, all right. So, that about wraps it up. Um, this is the special webinar offer you guys get for participating in this webinar. So uh, there's a link right there in the chat box. It's not going to come up in the questions box that we've been using, but right there in the chat box, there's a link to this uh, special offer and you get all of these different things, how to measure your delta. There's five different ways to do that. Um, income generation, which is what I do. I, I look for selling options. Most part, I know the last couple of webinars I've done were in, you know, premium buying where you're paying a debit, but my portfolio is almost all uh, sell it, different option strategies where I'm collecting a credit because those to me have the higher probability of profit and therefore, you know, I'm going for singles and doubles, sometimes triples. When you're buying options, you're looking for a home run and when you're a home run hitter, you're striking out more times than you're getting a hit. So um, singles and doubles, guys, I'm looking for on-base percentages. Um, anyway, so you get this. Uh, also, if you do sign up for this particular uh, strategy today, you also uh, will be given the opportunity to take advantage of another offer, and it's $7 for 30 days, which gets you uh, the archive of all the different webinars that I've done. It also gives you the daily market commentaries where I go in and I basically talk about the different strategies I'm putting on. You know, I mean, this past week I was crazy. I was, I was doing like 15 minute daily market commentaries because I was doing like 10, 10 strikes or 10 uh, underlyings a day. So, um, and then I go into each one of those, why I went into this particular strategy. Why did I do this particular strategy with this particular underlying on this particular day in that particular environment. You know, I go through this volatility was expanding. The market was oversold. The reason that, you know, and I go through all that. I talk to you guys through what I'm thinking um, and, and why I'm doing those things. And, you know, some days I just talk about what's going on um, in the world of, of equities. You know, I was talking about um, Harley Davidson, you know, getting bought out by a private equity firm today. So, uh, I talk about all of that stuff. So those are hopefully very informative for you guys. And uh, 
like I said, uh, you get the archives of webinars and several of the videos I go in talk about the different scans I use uh, to find uh, high probability trades and high, high implied volatility stocks. All right. That's about all I got for you guys today. Sorry we ran a little bit over, but I hope you guys got a lot out of it other than even just the uh, learning a new strategy. And have a great weekend. Have a great uh, 4th of July. Don't blow any fingers off and hope to see you guys uh, at the next webinar. If you can't take that, take it easy. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Hey, thank you for all the kind words. Take care, everybody. Appreciate it.